Hello well wishers and welcome to my channel Aspiring Minds. In today's video, we are going to do Matthew Arnold's poem Life and Thought. So grab your virtual seats and let's begin. In this video, I am going to discuss with you the line by line meaning of the poem. Along with that, I have identified three major themes and this is a very very interesting poem where you are going to see a discussion of the themes as well. Matthew Arnold was a famous English poet and a cultural critic of the Victorian era. He is best known for his reflective and philosophical poetry which often explored the themes of being isolated, alienated and the search for meaning in the modern world. His works often reflect his concerns about the decline of faith and the erosion of traditional values in society. We also see how this is done in his other poem called The Dover Beach as well. Life and Thought by Matthew Arnold deals with the philosophical struggle of human existence, focusing mainly on the tension which is there between the mind and the quest that we all have to gain a deeper true meaning of life and establish a connection with life the poem reflects the victorian era's preoccupation with the industrial progress and scientific rationalism which often led to feelings of alienation and detachment what was happening is that because people were becoming more materialistic it was becoming difficult to give way to thoughts emotions and feelings that brings me to the central message of the poem which is inherent in the conflict or the tension which is constantly there between the dual forces which is life and thought anal suggests that while the mind and thought dominate our existence they also create a sense of detachment and dissatisfaction and it prevents us from experiencing a holistic experience of life if i talk about the title of the poem as i said it deals with the dual forces where life represents the raw experience of existence while thought signifies the reflective processes that often distance us from the pure unfiltered life when you are thinking numerous thoughts come to your mind and they may either push you forward or draw you backward in terms of the way you take actions in order to lead life so let us now discuss the line by line meaning of the poem but mind but thought if these have been the master part of us where will they find their parent element so anal begins by emphasizing how the mind dominates and the thoughts in our mind also dominate every action that we take in our life that is why he says master part of us he questions where these intellectual aspects are going to find their true origin or home or that is when is it that the human beings are going to be able to get a control over their thoughts what will receive them who will call them home but we shall still be in them and they in us and we shall be the strangers of the world so over here the words he uses they represents thought so he continues to think about what will ultimately happen how are human beings going to embrace the thoughts that come into their mind despite the dominance of thoughts in a human being's mind human beings are still intertwined with them you know thoughts are something you cannot control even when i am recording this video right now there are multiple thoughts which are coming to my mind so once a person gets overly engrossed in their thoughts it becomes difficult to be in the reality to be in the present and therefore it leads to a sense of alienation from the world and they will be our lords as they are now and keep us prisoners of our consciousness and never let us clasp and feel the all thoughts and minds rule over us 
confining us within our consciousness doesn't it happen when you are constantly thinking you have multiple tasks at hand and what is it that we do we keep thinking how will i do this how will i do that so a problem or a characteristic of a thought is it has the power to trap you it makes you a prisoner in your own mind that is why there is a very famous quote which is the best place that a person should always be is in their mind you need to have a very good a confident notion of who you are and once we are able to establish control over our thoughts we will be able to gain unity with existence but through their forms and modes and stifling wails and we shall be unsatisfied as now and we shall feel the agony of thirst agony means pain so the poet says that we can only understand the world through the restrictive form of thoughts that is our only way in which we can understand and interpret and analyze the world around us is through our thoughts so this leaves us perpetually unsatisfied and we are always seeking a deeper connection with life very beautifully he has put it the ineffable longing for the life of life baffled forever and still thought and mind will hurry us with them on their homeless march over the unalloyed unopening earth so matthew annal speaks over here of how human beings constantly long for a more refined and rich life however we are always unsatisfied why because our thoughts continue with their restless journey over an unwelcoming earth that is we are never satisfied with what we have if you think you want to earn 50000 rupees a month and you have been able to achieve it you will be like i want to earn 80000 now i want to earn 1 lakh now i want to earn 30 lakh rupees so our thoughts human wants are unlimited and human wants arise from endless thoughts and we need to get a control over it over the unrecognizing sea while air will blow us fiercely back to the sea and earth and fire repel us from its living waves and then we shall unwillingly return so the elements of nature which is earth sea air and fire reject and repel us symbolizing our alienation that is if we are not connected to our present by way of thoughts we will be alienated from the world we will become loners we are forced constantly to return to our unsatisfying human existence and we need to establish a way in which we learn to be satisfied with what we have back to this meadow of calamity this uncongenial place this human life and in our individual human state so the poet describes how human life is like a meadow of calamity i call myself a calamity at many times considering how many things i keep dropping off and the things that go wrong however he says that human life is like a calamity where there are going to be multiple challenges highlighting how human beings because of these multiple challenges that come to test your resilience ultimately leave human beings discontent unsatisfied and they feel that they are not aligned with their agenda and from where does this agenda this thing to achieve come from their mind go through the sad probation all again to see if we will poise our life at last to see if we will now at last be true so the poet says that we must endure this challenging life repeatedly that is why he says that you will have to go over the probation period again and again whenever you enter into a job the initial phase you are on probation and it is a time when the organization is trying to test you to see whether you will be able to adjust and it is also mind you as employees it is your test i mean your analysis also of whether you are going to be able to stay in a particular organization or not generally we think that oh my god will the company hire us or 
will be be thrown out so it is not just the company who is testing you but at that time the employee should also equally test whether he is fit for the company whether the work environment is not toxic whether there is a work life balance or not so the poet is over here telling that we have to endure this life and constantly each experience in our life each phase in our life is like a new phase when you become a mother when you get married when you are still growing up as a student there are different phases of your life different roles that life will thrust you in and each time a new situation a new change comes in front of you you are going to be in a probationary period because you will not know exactly how to tackle that situation you are going to start learning from scratch so the poet says that one must find balance and truth in our existence to our own only true deep buried selves being one with which we are one with the whole world or whether we will once more fall away so the goal is to align with our true selves which would help us to align with the world however there is a risk of falling back into confusion and separation throughout this i am going on telling you that you need to be confident about yourself you need to know who you are and what you are capable of never go into self doubt the system in which you work the system in which you live there are going to be situations in life where you are going to be challenged you are going to be put in a situation where you will be facing self doubt you need to conquer over yourself first and once you are confident nothing can break you right into some bondage of the flesh or mind some slough of sense or some fantastic maze forged by the imperious lonely thinking power and each succeeding age in which we are born so the poet warns of how human beings fall into traps which are created by our bodily desires or misleading thoughts and all this leads to us being trapped in a cycle of constant struggle forever and ever so you need to ensure that it is okay to indulge in pleasures but don't get stuck in the maze of pleasures maze means bhul bhulaiya so don't get stuck in that maze of pleasures because it's your thoughts which are driving you into that place if you get stuck your life is going to be a loop of struggles don't do that we'll have more peril for us than the last will god our sense with a sharper spur will fret our minds to an intenser play will make ourselves harder to be discerned the word peril means problems and troubles the word discern means to be understood so the poet is saying that each new age presents greater dangers and challenges intensifying our senses and mind making it harder to understand our true selves now here you can understand these lies from the point of view of a human being and also you can understand it from how matthew arnold is referring to the background where i told you about how the industrial revolution was happening in the background and it had led to excessive indulgence in materialistic things mechanization technological advancements which led to a sense of alienation and isolation from the world so the poet is saying that if you indulge in these kind of challenges and you are not able to embrace the challenges but you instead give in to these challenges you become weak and you give in to your pleasures life is going to become difficult for you to understand and live and we shall struggle a while gasp and rebel and we shall fly for refuge to past times their soul of unborn youth their breath of greatness so the poet is saying how if human beings are not able to adjust to the present times they are going to struggle and they are going to find solace 
and comfort in the past where we imagine a purer and more vibrant existence i'll explain this to you whatever situation is gone now if you've lost a person whether um, you've had a breakup or you've lost a job for whatever reason when you were present with that person or with that job or in that situation it was a very stifling situation you were not being able to adjust and cooperate and now that is gone for most of us there are exceptions we start thinking all the good things about that particular person that particular situation and we think that no that was better the present is seeming more difficult like if i think about how i was doing in my college life when i was living my college life it was very challenging considering the new things which i had to learn every day and i used to wait for a time when i would you know go ahead further and reach higher studies of life but now in my present scenario when i look back and think at my college life my school life i feel that was a better life right and we shall struggle a while gasp and rebel so this i have told you and the reality will pluck us back ned us in its hot hand and change our nature and we shall feel our powers of effort flag so reality will pull us back shaping and altering us that is you will not be able to through your thoughts remain in the past for a very long time you are going to be pulled back to the present times and rally them for one last fight and fail and we shall sink in the impossible strife strife means struggle and pain and be a stray forever so the poet is saying that in the end despite a final struggle we all fail and we are left lost and directionless that is no matter how much we try just as i call it procrastination which is again an element of thinking too much right what happens you keep thinking you keep procrastinating for about 1 hour 2 hours more than 2 hours and ultimately there is no constructive fruitful something that you have achieved at the end of those 2 hours so that is what the poet is saying that if you do not gain control over your thoughts you are forever going to be lost and directionless in your life so to understand the poem better these are the aspects from which we can look at the themes first is intellect versus experience second is alienation and third is a search for unity let us discuss each of them in details the first and foremost theme that we see in life and thought by matthew arnold is the dichotomy or the dual bond which is there between intellect and direct experiences of life the poem suggests that an over emphasis on the mind and intellect can create a barrier between individuals and the world around them the poet portrays the mind and thought as masters that dominate our lives suggesting that they can imprison us within our consciousness the imprisonment prevents us from experiencing the true meaning of life described as the all directly and purely instead we are forced to engage with life through the forms and modes and stifling wails of our thoughts that is our mind gets stuck within certain thought processes this conflict creates a constant sense of dissatisfaction and a craving for a more deeper connection with our existence in this world when i mention alienation we see how this poem is full of a sense of alienation and dissatisfaction the poet describes humans as strangers of the world suggesting a deep seated estrangement or detachment from both nature and society this alienation this isolation is further 
heightened by our consciousness which keeps us isolated within the confines of our own minds if you are only thinking and not taking actions you are going to be always trapped in your mind so the poet emphasizes that this estrangement this detachment is not just a temporary feeling but a fundamental condition of human life the repetition of unsatisfied as now highlights the constant nature of this satisfaction despite our efforts to find meaning and fulfillment we are continuously restricted by our intellectual barriers by our thoughts which leads to an agony of thirst that is we are in pain and we want a deeper more satisfying experience of life Amidst the themes of conflict and struggle there is a constant longing in human beings for unity this search for unity is both an internal and an external quest to be true to our deep buried selves and to become one with the whole world anil suggests that achieving this unity is the main thing that we need to have in order to be able to overcome the sense of alienation and dissatisfaction that is present in human life however the poem also acknowledges the difficulty of the quest the poet uses the phrase imperious lonely thinking power that is our thoughts which often lead us away creating false paths and illusions that come in the way of our progress this yearning for a life of life a deeper more authentic existence remains central the poem captures the longing for a state of being where our intellect and experience self and world are harmoniously integrated So that's it from this video. I hope you liked it. Do hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel for more such future updates. Thank you for watching. Bye.